Good evening, one and all. Welcome to Good Game Nice Presents Wild Space. Uh, I'm your dungeon dude, Ruddy Ryan. Uh, we've got your uh, best pals and friends here as well, uh, playing a wide array of characters and personalities and foibles. Uh, really hit the second, <laughs> third syllable of that. Uh, uh, welcome tonight. Um, let's see, announcements. I don't think we have anything going, oh, we do have a Cyberscape releasing this Thursday. Is that accurate? No. Wednesday. Wednesday, this Wednesday, which is like the Thursday of yesterday. Monday. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, so it's going to be in a couple days. Next episode of Cyberscape is coming out on podcasts. We've got uh, like, uh, iTunes and, um, Cybertronica, Cybertronica, and wherever podcasts are available. Um, was it Castbox? That's what it's called. Yep. So uh, let's see. Uh, gosh, I think that's it for this week. I'm sure we'll have a smattering of streams that happen as uh, certain people's years draw to a close. Um, but um, but for right now, this is what you got. And what do you have, by the way, is uh, this little uh, episode uh, where let's do some all catching up on where we're at and everything. Does that sound good? Cool. So, um, <laughs> right now, the party stands in a sort of, I don't know, a field of slaughter guts. I, pretty much, there's a, a forest of uh, of inside outedness. Um, there, uh, on this kind of mud and blood soaked grounds with gnarled roots, there's corpses and bones flung hither and thither, hanging from the trees like the worst Christmas. Um, but right now. That's not the most interesting sight <laughs> that uh, is before our party. Uh, my goodness. Um, before the party, a great black furred beast with a crown of wicked horns twisting outwards. Six baleful eyes burning infernal and golden red. Enormous claws that tear up the soil as it clambers out of the shallow pit that still smolders after the flames. It raises itself up 20 feet tall, a long coiling tail lined with the rich spine sliding across the field of bones. Its maw splits open rows of black and yellow teeth sharp and dripping, sends a shiver down Bolster's spine as it's the same grin he saw in a vision oh so long ago. And uh, let's see, passive perceptions. Rosh, you notice around its throat, slightly obscured by matted black fur, what looks like a collar, but it moves and breathes opposite of the beast it adorns small tentacles wriggling, clutching at the neck of the beast. It uh, comes up, surveys the ground before it at all of you. And I think it lets out a mighty roar. Uh, and I need everyone to roll me a, uh, this isn't technically an action, in case you're wondering, Vincent, uh, it is everyone rolls a wisdom save as it enters the field. Okay. Oh, goodness. If you're wondering, Vincent. Okay. Uh, yeah, Vincent. <laughs> yeah, Vincent. That's because I'm at the top of the initiative from last time. Yeah. Yeah, Vincent. Whoa. Uh, we oh, roll no. bad. Oh, boy. Except it's really I, scary. I don't have Tides of Chaos back yet, so. Yikes. Uh, he is shook. Holy is right. crap. He is shook. Wow. Is I have a plus nine. We oh, are no, like trash. Well, you know, 
Read off your rolls because this is incredible. I got 13. I got a nine. You got a three. That's a check. Do you have better oh, same wait. throws? Or same is it the throw. same? Let's see. Uh, I think it's the same. Okay, it's the same. Just check. Yep, it's the same. <laughs> I got a natural one for two. Bolster got a 10. I have a plus nine and I got an 11. Okay. Does anyone have? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, y'all, oh yeah, does anyone want to cash in? Wait, I have inspiration. I'm just, no, I don't. Yes, I do. Yes, Where did I use it last it, session? Please. I forgot. I just got one just now. Oh man, do I you have use it right now? Last session. I mean, you don't have to use it right now. I mean, no, this... I didn't. I'm going to use it right now because I want to. Okay. If okay. you roll bad again, I'm not going to use one. Because I'll forget otherwise. I also, I forgot. Oh, to use it. Uh, 17, not like absurdly better <laughs> um the dc was 18 god this... <laughs> damn it and right. we all die GG. so you all are stricken with fear I mean, you all right. take the frightened condition oh no uh, for those of you who missed more than under 10 so it's like so eight or below my goodness, y'all. Roll me a D100. D100? Uh, who rolled under 10? Everyone who rolled eight or less. Oh. 25? 55? Wild magic search. I mean, okay. any of those can pop basically whenever. Um... All right. So, um... Uh, Vincent, mm-hmm. I'm sorry that this is happening on your turn, uh, but you are, you get, you become incapacitated and spend this turn screaming, laughing, or weeping. I'll let you choose. I think alternating between all three. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Champ, <laughs> that's about right. when it comes to your turn, uh-huh. you have to use your action to attack the nearest creature. Well, okay. 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 As both of you are driven temporarily out of your mind. Okay, so uh, Vincent, do you want to play that out? (laughs) Screaming, laughing, crying? (laughs) Um, I think he just kind of goes fetal for a minute. And, um, yeah, just cycles through at random. Okay. Well, uh, that's going to bring us to the beast's turn. Uh, and let me see. Uh, I think what it's going to do is look out across all of you. Who's the biggest? I think Gwen is the biggest right now. Are you in your beast form? I don't remember. Uh, I'm, let me look and see if I've used one. Can I do that? How many times a day can I do that? No, I'm not. I still have both my transformations. Okay. Um, so okay, I'm not then, the biggest. <laughs> then it uh, makes sense for it to go for Rosh then. So Sorry, Rosh. It, be- <laughs> it bellows. <laughs> I am great. And it's gonna come at you and go for a couple swipey swipes. I'm um, gonna impose disadvantage on one of them. Okay. All right, click. Whichever one looks like it's gonna hurt more. All right. Um, well, we're gonna say the first one. Okay. So it rolls a 22. Yeah. All right, for 28 slashing damage. Um, it's also going to uh, bite out at uh let's see who else is close by um it's gonna bite out at gwendolyn give you a little snappy poo for a 25 yep all right you'll take 19 piercing damage um and then it's gonna let's just let's just keep this equitable and it's gonna reach out and try to hug somebody no, I'm just kidding. It's gonna try to gore pace with its horns. So, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, 
It rolls a 35. Um, yeah, that barely hits. Okay, 15 piercing damage. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's all I can do in this turn. As it's uh, just slams in, I think it's gonna like slams in, pushes uh, pace back, kind of flying through and clattering in the bones behind. And it's just kind of like whirling around, spinning around all these targets around it. Uh, that brings us to Champo. Uh, let's go ahead and roll a dice to see who you're closest to. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, this... I prefer that to the alternative. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay, what do I roll? Roll me a, a d7. You can do that in roll 20. Okay. And we'll just do the way that all the icons are on our map. We'll do one through seven. Okay. Four. So, go ahead. I can take it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I already set Callie down, so... I'm sort of far away, but I guess I'm going to run up and <laughs> I think like something like looks like it like short circuits. Um, and yeah, she like comes at you. Uh, how do I play this game again? <laughs> okay, a 15? I think that misses. That misses me. Oh, okay. So as, a, as this uh, plasma great sword hums over your head, Gwendolyn, uh, roll me tw- two more times. Or do you have two attacks or three at this point? I only have two. You only have two. Sorry. I'm thinking later, fighter. So, okay. yeah, roll me one more time. Ooh, 24? That does hit me. So Ouch. It arcs again as this plasma great saber um, kind of drags across your uh, torso, scoring a, a, like a sizzling mark into your armor. Just take 13 radiant damage. All right, that's gonna bring us to uh, Bolster. And, and uh, Vincent, you are now, um, both you and Pay, or I'm sorry, you and Champ have kind of recovered a little bit. So you are capable of taking reactions now, either of you, um, as okay. this kind of temporary effect uh, ceases. Um, okay. However, uh, all of you are, oh gosh, who went? Oh, uh, so Vincent, roll me a wisdom saving throw and champ, roll me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Sorry, I forgot you You have a chance to save. It's better, 19. Okay, cool. 13? Okay, so you're still scared, champ. Ugh. You're still Got frightened, it. but you're not mad anymore. Vincent, okay. you're, you're no longer frightened. Good to know. Okay, sorry. Uh, that's gonna bring us to Bolster, who's just gonna pop off a couple shots and then get out of there. Um, he's gonna hop on the back of Samothy's and like try to uh, get as far, as far away as he can. So I'm gonna roll these real quick. Uh, one, two, three. He gets a natural 20, 11, and a 10. So he does hit with uh, seven points of lightning damage as he, these, um, these lightning hydras launch out of the uh, hand cannon and uh, kind of lash up against the beast. However, it doesn't seem to have as much an effect as he thought it might, but then he scurries away, kind of like puttering, like Sam go trying to get farther back and try to get some uh, cover. So that's gonna bring us to Rosh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna use my action to cast a uh, beacon of hope mm. uh it's my last third level spell i'll throw that up in the chat uh same thing why is it saying fourth level am i wrong is that a fourth level spell anyway i'm just gonna put it up and i'll, I'll sort that out in a minute um anyway uh that's and then I'm using my bonus action to attack it with my spiritual weapon. Excellent. Uh, which am I at disadvantage for that? It, um, yeah, because I'm afraid. Correct. Okay. My sheet is being real slow. Sorry. So is mine, man. Uh, it's only a 17 to hit. 
Unfortunately, well, it, it hits, but it doesn't um, seem to affect the creature at all. As it, um, sorry, to be clear, it's not that it's immune. Yeah. It, it's just the AC is higher than that. Yeah, I got sorry. you. Sorry. Just, uh, <laughs> I saw some people, she was like, oh no. It's immune <laughs> force damage. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and that's all I can do. Do I make another wisdom save now? Yeah, you make a wisdom save at the end of your turn. And then I get advantage on this because of the beacon of hope now. Nice. Very um, nice. Which, I, how many people can I catch in the beacon of hope it, 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 where I was currently standing? What's the radius? 30 feet. Um, or can I position, yeah. could I position myself to get everybody? Um, not everybody. I think uh, Bolster has flown a ways back. That's right. um, but but I think you are close enough. Oh, gosh. I think you are close enough to just about everyone else. Um, we'll go ahead and include Captain in on it because okay. I came over here to punch y'all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll just say it's about that. So I think you can, yeah, move in, get 30 feet. So that's, yeah, for sure. Okay. And then that's a 24 on my wisdom saving throw. Nice. Um, there was almost a, uh, there was a palpable sense of, of weight and dread that had kind of draped over you. But um, from this divine light within yourself, you crack through it and it falls away and you are no longer frightened. Okay. That will bring us to Pace. Who is still frightened? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm fear. Um, I'm gonna bring my healing spirit over to Rosh and have it give him give them some hit points, which with Beacon of Hope is six. Nice. Well done. Cool. Um, and then I'm gonna shoot it at disadvantage, and then I roll at the end of my turn, right? Oh, Correct. also, Captain didn't roll a Wisdom save earlier. Um, we're just. I was gonna say he's a feared. He follows your cues. We'll say. <laughs> oh shoot, I clicked it anyway. I'm so sorry. Whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna shoot him. Well, at least he's not temporarily mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Okay. He would have had advantage, but anyway. Okay, I'm gonna shoot <laughs> I'm gonna shoot the big un. Uh that's a 31 to hit. A disadvantage? And uh, nope, without disadvantage, because I am an idiot. No, that's I'm not 31 bad. to hit with disadvantage. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Okay. I'm, I'm upset. Um, uh, yeah. It takes seven piercing damage. Yeah, it does. It needs to make a constitution save. Okay. Um, sure. Let me pull this up. I, I need to pop this out so I don't ever minimize it. Uh, saving throw. Con? He's probably good. He's probably gonna. He's gonna be fine. I'm sure. He's, he's all yeah, right. he's totally fine. All and right, that's uh, all I do. Oh, Captain's gonna attack too, of course. Nice. Oh, Captain, go. He's also up here, so disadvantage. I can't can't move anywhere. Closer. Oh, he can't. He can't. Never mind. He doesn't attack at all. He would have missed anyway. He yeah. thought about it and was like, "Oh nope, I can't do it." Mm -mm. He's like, "Nope." <laughs> Mom, no. Okay, that's my turn. Mom, no. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, so, um, great. Uh, did you already do your wisdom save at the end of your turn? Sure didn't. And I have advantage now, right? You do. Bless. Because there was a beacon of hope. What does it look like? Rush. I think it's just, uh, it's not exciting or anything. I think it's just like a radiant sunlight that uh, comes off like uh, that, like like the the dawning sun uh, from mm. my holy symbol. Nice. And you rolled 18, which means. Yeah. So I just you... realized I should have said it's invisible and that there's no way he could have possibly noticed that <laughs> I cast this, but never mind. I mean, you're also getting hugged by like a ghost pterodactyl that's healing you. So there's that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's going to bring us to Gwendolyn. I have a question. Okay. Do his attacks count as weapon attacks or not? Uh, uh, which ability is in question? This is my blood curse where if a thing damages me, then I do damage back to it, but it says a weapon attack. And I never know what's a weapon attack and what's not, so I just always ask. Um, I, I, I would imagine that, yeah, we, we'll just say yes, it's fine. Great, I, I do that. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so as my bonus action, I'll do Blood Curse of Mutual Suffering on the mean thing, and then if I can attack it, I'm going to attack it. All right, you can, but uh, uh, well, actually, no, it enough? has, it is close enough now, actually, yeah, it just barreled into you all, so you don't have to move closer to it. 
Um, but you will be at disadvantage. Okay. So click twice. That's a nineteen. A nineteen. It's not hard enough, unfortunately. Okay. I do it again. That's seventeen. That's worse. It is. Um, it is. <laughs> I, I think I, I, it's it's the fear that is sunk deep within you. Uh, you strike at this thing, and it's it's almost as if something is holding you back. Something intrinsic within you is having difficulty coming up against this thing. That seems right. Ryan, I have uh, a question. Yep. Um, it is, is this a fiend or, or is this a fiend? Yep. Okay. Could you add four more damage to it, please? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, oh, dang it, it's dead. <laughs> Look at that, you're all good. Just kidding. Uh, roll another wisdom save for me, Gwen. 23. Oh, once again, standing near the light of Celestial, you feel emboldened, empowered, cracking through this uh, pall that's thrown over your soul. And you uh, you find it encouraged by the light as uh, the, the beast kind of like snarls as it casts strange shadows behind it. Uh, which brings us to Vanson. Woo! Um, just a reminder that um, I take Tides of Chaos is currently in the state where you can trigger a surge at your pleasure. Um, Good to know. All yep. right. If so, it makes sense, I'll do it. Thanks. Yep. So I think uh, Vincent's going to get up from the fetal position, kind of shake himself off a little bit, um, reach into one of his pouches, uh, you know, muttering and uh, gesticulating as he does so, and flings out a bunch of little glass figurines and says, fly, my pretties, and casts Animate Object, mm -hmm. or Animate Objects. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. What, what do I need to I'm know? not sure what those dice were rolling, but 10 little glass figurines, 10 tiny figurines come zipping out. They look kind of like little origami figurines, and um, I can command any creature I made with a bonus action, and I'm just going to tell them to attack the big one. And so I okay. made a macro, which hopefully will work. All uh, right. Roll that. <laughs> that's a lot of dice. <laughs> um, so there are 10 right. attacks in there. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, so first off, are these magical attacks or are these physical attacks? It's made with magic. I don't know. The spell doesn't specify one way or the other, whether it's magical or mundane. Um, it's a I, fifth level spell. Well. I'm just saying. Well, I would I would just say I like the image of it too much to, to poo-poo it. So I'll go with that. Um, okay, so you get attacks, numbers... Um, two, three, five, six, and nine hit. If you want to add up that damage and let me know. Okay. Uh, six, 11, 16, uh, 24. Um, did you see attack seven? Uh, it's the first oh, one. Oh, I did. The second no. one. Yes, that um, is one. one that four, is 29. One. 35 points of piercing damage because they are kind of angular and they just kind of start pecking at it or like there's maybe one little dude that's just like stabbing at it with his arms i love it i love it so say it again what's the total again uh 35 35 piercing. okay so yeah this uh you all witness as uh, just a flurry of like the sound of like glass clinking and just like <laughs> Like a small little swarm launches around, starts zipping around, slicing uh, these cuts into the thick hide of the creature, uh, sending this black blood like uh, pattering on the uh, ground below. Um, so what it's going to do as a react as a legendary action at that moment is going to whirl around its tail and everyone near it. Um, which is everyone except for Bolster <laughs> uh, needs to do and, and uh, <laughs> good luck, have fun with <laughs> rolling deck saves for those little creatures. <laughs> but, uh, 
Um, uh, yeah, okay. roll a death save. Okay, uh, mine first. I don't succeed, and now I need to Does roll. Does Captain need to roll, even though he's airborne? Frozen midair in fear. Um, is he within 15 feet? Of the ground? Of the creature. I. The creature is 20 sure, feet tall. I'll, I'll, sure, I'll so, just, I'll just roll. Okay. Oh, that's smaller than I was expecting. Oh, come on now. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, that's I still, still pretty big. I think that's quite tall. <laughs> But I was expecting it to be like gargantuan or huge or whatever the size category is. I can make it that way. Do you want that? <laughs> All right. So so I'm going to roll. So you need to roll a meet a 17 dex save or take 21 points of slashing damage. Is there a half seize if you meet it? No, I'm going to say it's all or nothing. You said 27 damage? Yes. Okay. Uh, so who, or 21 damage, sorry. 17 saving throw uh, yeah, is nope. the thing to meet. This is a DC. Case so, and Captain artfully dodge. Read your, uh, read your rolls off. 12. 7. 8. Pace, oh. Pace got a 23, Captain got a 17. Nice. 13. And half my figurines survive. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Dexy modifiers. Yep. All Tiny right. Are dexterous AF. <laughs> they got so, no spine. <laughs> all right. So now it's uh, the beast's turn. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Well, I gotta do quick texty. <laughs> all right. Um. Alrighty. Okay. So um, as this thing rolls around, its tail swaps through all of you. Um, almost n- nearly uh, uh, getting like all of the glass things as they kind of just shatter into a uh, hundred pieces, except for the five that managed to flit out of the way. Uh, Pace and Captain uh, nimbly dodge out of the way, uh, but the rest of you are uh, slashed with this um, uh, razor tail. Um, and then it sees just how uh, strong you all are, that you're not dead right now. The fact that you're not dead right now is pretty pretty <laughs> remarkable. So what it's going to do, it's going to take its claws, just bury them in soil, and then <laughs> pull. And then you all feel the ground rumble beneath you. And these trees that you see growing across this entire planet begin to emerge and sprout and twist uh, all among you. Um, you find yourself separated uh, as these, uh, basically all these rows of trees come up and like twist together these overgrowth. You can kind of see images of each other as like the brush like snaps shut um, between you all. So I will draw this real quick, but basically there's, oh my God, I can't, (laughs) that's terrible. All right, uh, basically just like lines like this and most of you are split up. Um, We'll say, let's just, you two, you two, you two. And And uh, how high are these barriers? um, The canopy shuts over you at uh, about 15, 20 feet. So that's its turn. Um, which is going to bring us to champ. Oh, okay. And I'm still spooked. Um, I can't get closer to it, right? Mm-mm. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to pull out my blaster. Take a couple shots at it. Oh, wait. Actually, just kidding. Uh, okay, that's an action. Yeah. I'm going to do this instead. Uh She's going to, like, uh, put her hand to her chest, and then, like, suddenly she gets all blurry and is going to cast Blur. Nice. Very cool. And then that's... Uh, Do you back up, stay where you are? What's up? Uh, I'm going to stay there with Gwen, and... Yeah. I'm going to do okay. that, and then I get to roll another Wisdom save, right? You do. You absolutely At the end of do. my turn? Okay. 
17. But I'm going to use Indomitable. Wait, Roll it again. That, was it 18 or 17? I don't remember. It was, 17, 18. It was 18. It was 18. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. yep. Yeah, so close. <laughs> but I'm going to use Indomitable and try again. Oh, um... So it, the the wording of Beacon of Hope, does it say you have to actually see it or just be within range oh. of it? They just have to be within range when I cast it. Um, okay. All right, so. cool. All right, cool. So you all are still under that effect, which means you have advantage. Um, I have advantage. Okay, then I will just do it again. And 19. Woo, that was a natural 20 for 19. <laughs> hey. oh, <God>. So wise. <laughs> so wise. Well done. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. Woof. Okay. Uh, very cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, uh, once again, I think maybe you like your internal, um, <laughs> I don't know what the, there's like this, this, um, probably this marriage of, of, of circuitry and soul that comes together, finds its strength. And you, uh, I kind of see you kind of like, maybe like kind of not breathing heavily, but kind of like getting your ground and then just kind of <laughs> your sword comes back out as you get pumped and ready to go again. Yes. All right, that's gonna bring us to bolster. Can uh, uh, Gwen and Rosh roll me, I guess two, both of you roll uh, a d20. Okay. Three. And Wrong rolls, five. Five, okay. Uh, Rosh wins that roll um, and bolster's gonna come over and try to heal up Rosh a little bit. Um, so gonna cast Cure Wounds, uh, for six hit points. Um, that would be actually maxed because of Beacon of Hope, if it's still up. Okay, cool. So, um, 13 hit points. That makes a big old difference. Yeah, that makes Um, a big difference. And then, uh, uh, Bolster's gonna dip right back out. (laughs) He's like, nope. He just dabs and it's like, no, please. Yeah, yeah. I think like S- Sam's speed is unreal. That's so he's coming. <laughs> Land hands come back. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all right. So I think that's uh, all he's gonna do. So we're just gonna bring us to Rosh. Okay. Gain six hit points. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Okay. Um, okay. So that changes a little bit of what I'm gonna do. Uh, I can't see anybody except for I assume Bolster and. Vincent. Bolster and Vincent and the Beast. And the Beast. Don't want to heal him. Um, <laughs> okay, well then I'm just Maybe it's divinity rules. Maybe if you heal him, it'll hurt him. Maybe I should try that. Is he undead? Don't do that. <laughs> We've established I mean, he's a thief. just dead. True. <laughs> I resurrected he's it. Undead now. Um, I'm stalling. Uh, can, yeah, I'm going to heal Vincent. I'm going to cast a second level Cure Wounds on you. Uh, which will heal you for 21. Um, nice. <laughs> uh, I think that was just as much as the beast did <laughs> with its tail. Yeah, it was. Uh, and then because I cast the second level spell, I have to do a, yeah, uh, just going to follow up with my spiritual weapon again. All right. Maybe I'll be able to hit this time. Uh, I feel like I'm just poking him. Well, 22 to hit. That is a hit. For As damage. the spear, right? It's a spear? C. All right, a four spear. Spears and spears are real good. And pops it on the noggin. Um, for 10 points of force damage. Well done. Uh, that brings us to pace. Excellent. Um, since Captain and I are both unafeared, the captain is going to try to attack. All right. Uh, Are captain's attacks magical? No, they're not. And he rolled a nine anyway. Okay. I don't know how he missed a brick house, but okay. (laughs) Uh, Trying to dodge, like, I think, like, what we can do as it's, uh, captain's area of flying has drastically restricted. That's true. Trying to make its way through as also more like branches are twisting out and just can't get the momentum to lay a a fantastic strike. Yeah. And then I'm going to shoot with a 25 to hit. That is a hit. 11 magical piercing damage. Okay. And he's totally fine. 25 constitution, same for year. And then bonus action. I think I can make healing spirit heal again on my turn. Is that right? You can move it. 
Oh, motive is to move it. Okay. That's it then. No. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, uh, any bonuses? Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to run away. Nah, I'll just stay there. Okay. <laughs> that is going to bring us to Gwendolyn. Uh, I'm using my bonus action to activate my Crimson Right for Ouch. cold damage. Okay. And then I'm gonna attack it twice. All right. It sounded like you were gonna say something else. Nope, okay. never. Great. I'm not a talker. Just regular this time. It's a 24. That is a hit. And a natural 20. Excellent. Both rolling. of those hit. Damn both of those hit. Um, your uh, additional rolls. I'm sorry. Your the uh, the lightning or cold or fire damage is all gonna be halved. That's fine. So, if you could add those up for me. Yeah. Thirty-eight. Vincent, you're on deck. 40, Forty-one. Fifty-two. Fifty-five. Fifty. God. Woo. Okay. All right. Ha. Well, that's gonna speed some stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well ah! done. Uh, geez, Louise. So yeah. Um, you can kind of see it. Uh kind of like peering down each of the tunnels, seeing where it wants to like barge down first. Um, and as it kind of peeks into your tunnel, you like give it a nasty rake, two nasty rakes across the face, dealing 55 points of damage. And I'm gonna My. step to the side and look at Champ and be like, you turn. <laughs> Excellent. That's gonna bring us to Vincent. Okay, real quick, I uh, forgot to make a Constitution saving throw, uh, concentration check for the animated objects. So this will be versus 21. Thankfully, nope, um, that is probably a failure. Yeah. So yep. there goes my fifth level spell slot, my last one. Poop. Wait, uh, uh, animated objects is concentration? Yep. So those last five fi figurines lose their animation and go <laughs> Uh, fall into the mud. One hits like a skull and shatters. Poop, poop, poop. Um, that changes what I was gonna do. Uh, let's see. Just double checking Storm Sphere because it's a dumb spell, but <laughs> <laughs> it may be my best option right now. Uh, yeah. No, that's, that's probably what I'm going to do. So um, that concentration drops, and I'm going to uh, cast Storm Sphere on it. So right where the little figurines drop, I'm just going to go, no, my babies, and create a little, uh, starts off as a little ball of wind, but then starts expanding until, because it's, uh, what is it, 20-foot radius sphere. So it's going to just cover the entirety of this beastie. Okay. Um, and yeah, so Storm Sphere, let me roll that. So it's going to need to make a strength saving throw, which I forgot it's real good at. So it's probably always going to make this save, which is an all or nothing. Right. Um, 27? Yeah, that beats it. Um, but now for my bonus action, I'm going to have the sphere shoot lightning at it. Okay. Uh, 14 probably misses. Yeah. Yep. So that was a complete waste of a turn. Uh, not entirely. Roll me a d100. Not entirely. <laughs> <laughs> this could go very poorly. Or What's very it? well. Um, what is it, 36? Heavy object appears over a random creature within 60 feet of you and falls for 2d8 points of damage. Target makes <laughs> dex save versus spell DC. Yes. Okay, cool. So within 60 feet of you, I'm going to say is everybody, including I was, the monster. I was so hoping. I was like, nothing bad can happen to us. He'll have to see us. Nope. Okay. So d8. Hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 
Oh, that's including yourself. Um, should I include you? I'm not going to. We'll just say a D8. Eight is a creature, and uh, one through seven will be, I guess, the order that you're in. Roll twenty because I mixed up every all the icons. Cool. Sure. Six. It's not the creature. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm gonna say it's bolster. <laughs> okay. it's, it's uh, we'll say we'll say it's Samothy's because Samoth like bolster is in Samothy's. Mm -hmm. So I'm rolling two d8 damage, but it needs to make a, a dex, uh, save dex save seventeen. Okay, um, dex save seventeen. Um, Eight damage. Bolster rolls a dex save. I, I, can't, I can't see what it was. What was it? Uh, Eleven. Yeah. Eleven. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> that's not gonna do it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what's the damage? Uh, eight bludgeoning. All right, that's not too bad. Sam's fine. As this uh, boulder materializes out of nowhere and crunches down, and uh, I think Bolster's like, "Oh man!" and like, "Oh, juniper beans and stuff." Uh, and as I kind of cracks spiral over of the uh, glass. A uh, hole. Um, <laughs> so that's uh, you now have your tired to get us back. Um, that's going to bring us to For one round. <laughs> my Duke Core Hall. So, uh, gosh, it really doesn't like. It really doesn't like what you just did, Gwen. I hear muted, but I think it's probably real choice. I just said, I mean, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> so what it's going to do is just kind of start vroom, vroom, down the hallway where you and Champ are. Uh, Sorry, Champ. Trying to think of what saving throw this ought to be. We'll say your choice of strength or constitution. Um, do strength. For me, I'm making it. Uh, both of you, as it's going to bowl okay. over both of you. Cam into um, strength. <laughs> um, okay. The DC, hold on, hold on. It's, oh my God, it's real high <laughs> for oh. this. Um, Bring it. <laughs> 25, beat a 25. Good thing we're so strong. Mm -hmm. Oh, so close. <laughs> Dang okay. it. All right, so what it does, it bowls over both of you, uh, knocking you prone. Um, you're both gonna take uh, 2d8 bludgeoning damage um, for 15 points of bludgeoning damage. Those are good, good rolls. Um, and uh, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna wrap its, uh, Champ, you're prone, kind of knocked further back away, like sliding through the mud away. Mm -hmm. uh, the beast right now is like just hovering over you, uh, Gwendolyn. Its claws kind of wrapped around your form, its jaws opening up, uh, this green liquid like kind of drooling out of its mouth as it kind of like splashes on your face and body. And it, it like, uh, <sighs> dog. Um, and uh, that's going to be its turn, bringing us to champ. Oh, heck, it takes that damage too. Oh, it does. Okay. All right. 15 points of... Necrotic. 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 Necrotic damage. Cool. The... All right. I say All to right. it. Yeah. Me. <laughs> okay. I found uh, my Okay. Uh, I'm going to get up. Is it? Am I within fifteen feet? Can I make it if I run yeah, over? Yeah, I think, I think so. It? Um, is it a, like a cool? Like, do you like what? Do you have like a cool way of getting up? I do like a triple backflip. <laughs> no. What? Uh, <laughs> Are you serious? No. Okay. <laughs> um. No, probably just like. Just real. Uh, weird it probably that. like grinds a lot because I'm sure that's like muddy and gross, and it's like yeah, getting in some gear, so it doesn't sound the best. No, okay. All right, cool. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> A little bit of flame is cool. Um, and then I've got the... I had blur up, so when do I make the con save to see if I still have that? Is that the end of my turn, or is that right now? Um, as yeah, soon as you take damage, typically. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, and I'm a warcaster, so I have advantage on this. Okay. Okay, I rolled a 25, so I... Excellent. So yeah, you still, still are blur okay. a blurred. Still blurry. Okay, and I'm just going to run and attack him with my great saber. Twice. Ooh, the first one's 12. Oh, that is... Oh, the 23 will hit. Okay, and the second one's 23, yeah. Okay, and that is 14 radiant damage. Excellent. He talked in trunk. I know he done drunk. Just letting you know that y'all can't see him at this point because he just like ran down one of the hallways. Oh, good. Uh, cool. So, uh, fourteen radiant damage. Um, excellent. It snarls at you, momentarily distracted. Uh, which is going to bring us to bolster. Oh God, bolster. Um, I think this is what bolster would do. I don't. Well, bolster is kind of self-sacrificial. Oh, he is actually. I didn't want to play him like this because I don't like doing that with a character that's not mine. But uh, he is pretty self-sacrificial, so he's gonna uh, race towards Gwen and try to heal her. Um, and he's not gonna be able to get away. <laughs> he's gonna get stuck there. Uh, so, and this is maxed, so thirteen again right or no or is that within vision pace um what for rosh's beacon of hope oh wait a beacon of hope does that or was i thought it was pace's thing no my spirit just heals whoever's all in the same space oh uh, okay so it's beacon of hope that does it okay the advantage on wisdom set or the max oh the max healing yeah because okay, so. was affected by it before so she does the max okay 13. all right so now bolster is now within melee of this thing and won't be able to get away without procking AOC. So he'll stay there for now. <laughs> um, I'll probably wait till his next turn and try to disengage. All right, bring us to Rachel. Okay, so I just saw this thing disappear from oh, yeah, it, um, it just like it kind of runs through, and you see like its tail will like disappear around the corner. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run forward to where it was standing just a minute ago. Okay. Um, so that I can be situated. That is going to run into my storm sphere. That's fine. Um, so I can be situated where I can see down all three hallways. Okay. All right. You're in the middle of a storm. That's as long as I can see. That's okay. okay. It's um, baller is what it is. And I'm going to cast a fifth level mass uh, healing word. So. Um, so every six creatures, let me double check, up to six creatures of choice in the range, hit points equal to 1d4 plus my spellcasting ability, and I'm doing it at fifth level, so it's going to be 3d4, which is 12, plus 5 is 17. And I'm going to give 17 hit points to myself, Gwen. I can't see where Champ is at. Sorry, let me get Volster away. I'll move the monster away so you can see. Okay, myself, Gwen, Bolster champ and i'm having a hard time judging between pace and vincent but i'm gonna go with pace because i just healed vincent sweet oh no that's five so six i can get everyone ah that's right okay cool everyone except for captain and samothies but now we all know who you love more oh well i was going by whoever had the fewest hit points (laughs) (laughs) uh which just happened to be the same order that i love all of you uh yeah so 17 hit points to everyone Awesome, real good, good. Um, and that was just my bonus awesome. action. What? <laughs> <laughs> if I can, because I don't really have anything else. Why does can... not everyone play clerics? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been saying for so long. <laughs> They're redang dong. They're very good. <laughs> Fire okay. Jesus for the win. Um, this probably isn't going to work, but I'm going to cast a toll the dead on um on on uh, what's his butt the on beast pace. yeah coral. okay coral uh so he has to make coral. a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> coral oh, actually no i have my action uh I, if, if it's not too late for me to take that back no, um that's fine. i'm gonna use my channel divinity 
Okay. Um, and I'm going to do my Radiance of the Dawn. Um, All right. So he has to make a uh, Constitution saving throw. All right. Good daddy boy. <laughs> I clicked it. It's not coming up. Uh, it's 17. 17 on my Oh, which... it did come up. Okay. God damn, Ooh, that's, that's, that, quite that's my DC, though. Uh, and roll a two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so he takes half damage. Uh, All right. Uh, which I'll throw up. I don't know if I've updated this. Uh, where is it? No. I didn't save. That was the wrong thing. Uh, that should be plus 10 now. So that should be two more. So 21. So half of 21. Half of 21. All right. We'll do 11. Excellent. Wow. Big old, big old nasty sun surprise and then i assume <laughs> the storm sphere probably rocks me like a hurricane yeah, um, strength saving throw <laughs> uh i believe in you it's gonna be anticlimactic if i just beef it right here <laughs> i think it'd be funny like a super epic moment there's, <laughs> no there, yep. there's no way it can do enough damage to kill you um so yeah the lightning um, is the biggest that's part. a fail you take 2d6 Oh, that actually is a lot more damage than I thought. <laughs> Minus five. Yeah, but that's and that if they make the save, it's no damage. Uh, uh, and that's I'll right. I'll make a concentration check, which I make. Okay. Easy, easy, excellent. All that's right. my turn. All right, excellent. So um, there's all these hallways once again. Uh, Pace, you see Rosh being buffeted about by winds. But you uh, saw the beast slip in another direction, but um, you don't have eyes on it at the moment. What do you do? Um. Well, first I'm gonna send Captain out to try and try and get him. Freaking go, my bird friend. You got this. <laughs> Twenty-four to hit. Okay. Um, Fifteen normal piercing damage. It 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 pecketh. Uh, <laughs> this going through the storm sphere. Um, it's Do only when it appears or ends its turn. I'm going to say he flies far enough to not be in the storm anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll say, like, Captain flies through, kind of figures out what the winds are going, uses them, and kind of flip, flies with them, attacks Korhal, uh, doesn't feel as if it's beak pierced the hide, and then um, manages to kind of get a little bit higher away from this storm <clears throat> itself. Uh, what do you do, Face? What a good bird. So how long are these barriers separating everybody? Like, could I get around one so I can, like, get over here? Um, I can they sort of see what's happening? Uh, you're closer to the, the, the storm part than you are to the back part. Okay. That. So I won't be able to get around to get a view of my comrades, is what you're telling me. Um... Do you have do you have more than thirty feet or something? Doubt it. No, I have thirty. Okay, then unless I can I, do mad hops, but you said it was closed on top, so I can't. Yeah, do that. with average speed, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay, okay. Well, I can see Rosh, so I'm going to pick up my healing spirit where I left it and send it back over to Rosh to get okay. healed. All so, right. Hit points. So this spectral pterodon flies through un, un, uh, inhibited by the winds themselves. So if um, I leave my hallway, will I end up in the storm? Uh, if you go towards the storm, yes, you will be in the storm. Uh, th which well, sounds, that sounds like a sassy way to put it, but it's not sassy. I audience. didn't even take it sassy. <laughs> like, I just didn't know if it was like right at the edge of where I can get, like if I have to get into it to be able to see Core Hall. Yeah, the, yeah, because the storm, I, I, I'm like right where the walls end is like where the storm begins. Okay, <laughs> thought I was gonna shoot him. <laughs> no. Well, did I just delete somebody? No, I didn't. I just, um, I think oh, I hit enter. Oh, I didn't know that that does that. Okay. We just went you know what? I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go into the storm and be like, hello. And I'm actually going to put my bow on my, like just put it on and pick up my blaster rifle for the first time this entire campaign and point blank shoot this thing with a blaster rifle. Okay. All right, take a, a shotty poo. Oh, can I use my inspiration <laughs> after the fact? Sure. Yay! So you rolled a natural one. I did roll a natural one. And this time I didn't. 24 to hit. 
turning that frown upside down into 23 points of radiant damage. 27. Because he's a fiend. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right, 27 points of damage. Let's let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to cool that. Let's do it. (laughs) Yeah, you better be. Uh, <laughs> as this like massive like rifle you draw up to bear, um, maybe feel so uncomfortable like, but uh, you haven't been using it that much. But you level it, fire it, cut, carves through the winds, uh, bearing itself into the back of Coral, sizzling, popping. Well done. That's going to bring us to Gwendolyn. As this thing has kind of got you prone. Yep. Do I have any movement to get out of the sphere before it beats me up? No. Okay, how do I get beat up by this save. storm? Make a strength save. Okay. You're 22? Good. Yeah, you're No fine. damage. It's, right. I, you kind of get knocked around by the winds, but you like uh, have your feet uh, in a just enough like a good stance. Maybe do you, you have a tail, right? No. Do, no, you don't have a tail? Oh, well, you just managed to make it work anyway. <laughs> I just look really cool doing it. Yeah. So uh, your hair is being whipped around by the winds and stuff. It's real epic. Um, all right, Gwendolyn, this thing has got you in its clutches. It's right in front of your face. Um, you're prone. Uh, you're also kind of you're also kind of grappled. Um, that sucks. You <laughs> um, man, I've been thinking about this for so long, and I still don't know what to do. I'm gonna. I think Gwen's really mad right now. And also he called her dog. I'm gonna use my action to transform. Oh, nice. I love it. Okay, so um, describe your uh, your wolf form again. Um, it's- For those of us just joining yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, it's um, a lot bigger than Gwen herself is um, all of her limbs kind of grow and extend out. Um, and she's still got, cause I can still use all my gear. <laughs> so she's still got all of her gear on and her, I think her sword and her hand, but everything kind of extends out and she grows these like long claws, this long like snout um, out of her face and looks like a really big, scary two-legged wolf. What do you do? Oh, that's your action. That's it. Yeah, that's all I do, okay. but it looks really great. Okay, so I'm gonna say what it does. The transformation causes like, uh, kind of breaks Gorhal's grasp a little bit um, as it uh, staggers back a little bit surprised. So you're still prone, but, and your turner is over, but you're no longer grappled. So well done. This uh, is gonna what bring you us, asked for, Mimi. Mimi. That's gonna bring us to Vincent. Okay. Um, I've got 30 feet of movement. Would I be able to get to the end of my hallway, not enter the storm, but be able to see the beastie? If not, I'm fine with entering the storm. Um, uh, I think this uh, this is all a little bit arbitrary, but because yeah. of the, the way that you've um, kind of positioned yourself for the most part, I've kind of pictured you a little bit further back, so it might be faster for you to scoot back than to go forward. Oh, for me to go back? Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, then I will try to do that. Um, how far away from the beast- beastie does that put me now? Um, I would say medium. <laughs> okay, uh, so if I threw Whisper, it would be disadvantage with yes. the 2060 range? Defo. <laughs> then I will probably save that for next time um and instead i'll go ahead and start with the storm sphere attack which i forgot should have been at advantage if he was in it last time i assume he's no longer in this in the storm uh yeah correct okay so uh dirty 20 to hit that's a hit for 11 lightning probably reduced down to five or six Uh, whichever Six, yep. Oh, yep, done. Dirty 20. So that is my bonus. And I think for my action, um, da, 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 da. Uh, heck, it, I'm going to do a chaos bolt because this is fun. Actually, maybe not. Deciding between two spells. 
uh, Chaos Bolt, because I don't think it can leap back to him. Not that it ever does. Okay. Yeah. Either, I'll, either way. I'll, I'll allow it. Okay, so uh, Chaos Bolt at him. Uh, charging up my Kamehameha. Yeah! Uh, 24 to hit. It is a hit. So let's see. Ooh, and it was two of the same. So that's uh, 15 psychic damage. And because nice. it's the same, uh, chaotic energy leaps from, um, it says to a different creature of your choice, but you just said no, I could chain it to him. Yeah. So let's roll again. It is a new attack roll. And of course, the one time it chains, it's against the boss. <laughs> uh, 21 to hit. Yeah, that's, that's a hit. Okay. Um, let's stick with uh, Psychic again, because it was Psychic or Poison. So that time is 16 Psychic damage. Yikers. Uh, and then it kind of fizzles out after that. So this like this beam of energy like smacks into it and kind of like splits off into two pieces and like smacks it again and like splits off into four pieces and it just keeps on like like cascading slapping it over and over and over again and it's like uh, grunting and screaming uh, as this is all going on. Um, it growls at you all. Uh, is that your that's your all your actions? Yep. So yeah, um, well done. So. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. What happens next? <laughs> We're all nice and grouped up. <laughs> you are all nice and super grouped up. Um, if I can get this thing up. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen. What? Now we're in space <laughs> for the viewers at home. <laughs> Champ. Yeah. You find yourself in a vast, infinite library, which didn't know it was a thing of destiny until very recently, <laughs> but my notes are my notes. Um, you're in an infinite library. These shelves go on for miles and miles and miles. You're surrounded by books and tomes. You wander throughout them throughout the aisles, looking at different books. And what is inside? Oh, this isn't what I, the music I wanted. This is a little bit too, uh, a little bit too on the nose. Here we go. Okay. No, that's, that's the music if someone dies. Hold on, let's go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Gotta be prepared for everything. So, um, Cool. Good DMing. Uh, so you find yourself. You're doing this, great. This library. As you walk through, you look at different kind of uh, some of the books you like pull out absentmindedly off the shelves, look inside, and all the pages are blank. Not unlike the book you have in your possession. You're looking through these aisles for her, but you haven't been able to find her yet. And the deeper you go into this library, the more and more lost you become. These books after books after books, you're lost. But somewhere, you know this in the back of your mind, somewhere, something is hunting you. And you have to beat it to her. If you don't, she'll be gone. Again. Roll me intelligence saving throw. Okay. Uh, a one, so a natural one, total of four. You continue to wander through the libraries. You hear the sound of a growling monster somewhere within the catacombs. You find clues of Kaylee that she left behind, but you still can't find her. 
That's going to bring us to Bolster. Bolster is going to be standing in a vast field of golden wheat. Probably triple his own height. In the distance, he hears loud groans of engines as threshers begin to grind up the wheat, throwing them back. Um, and he hears them approaching the ground, rumbling beneath his paws. And he starts running, running away, but he doesn't know which direction to go. It sounds like the sound is coming from every direction. He runs the wheat, trying to get away. Uh, I'm gonna roll an int save for him. Um, he rolls a natural 20 for 29. Good, good boy. That brings us to Rachel. Rachel, you find yourself tumbling, falling, then cold splash as you sink in deep beneath the water. You reach out trying to right yourself, but almost immediately you lose sense of where the surface is. The water sizzles around you, but the air bubbles don't travel in any direction. You just flounder there. And in the depths, the dark, actually, the darkness that is all around you, you begin to see a shape emerging, monolithic. And you start to try to kick away from it, kicking away from it, kicking away from it. When a hand appears, just in front of you, you grab it. You take the hand and you're pulled out of the waters away from the creature. And you find yourself in an infinite pool, standing above the surface of the waters. Before you is a woman, a creature. Her uh, skin is kind of a uh, crimson color. She wears flowing garments adorned with gold, including a mask that obscures her face. When she speaks, and when she speaks, there's a bit of an unsettling feeling that comes over you. Someone that you half recognize. And that part of you that half recognizes her doesn't like what you remember. <laughs> um, we're going to come back to that, actually. We're going to go on to Pace. Pace, you're running through the streets of your city. The distant trees kind of uh, hanging over the um, stone, wood, and metal dwellings that make up the city of Tieflings. Um, you are sprinting. Trying to stop it. As the firebombs land behind you, engulfing buildings, homes, and of just a blaze of fury and flame. 
you try and try and try to stop him. Roll me intelligence saving throw. Nine. You hear the whirring of engines above as this ship continues its volley, raining down hell. Which brings us to Gwendolyn. Na 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 na. Okay. Gwendolyn, you find yourself deep within a labyrinthine cavern. You're going down the tunnels this way and that way. You're pursuing something. In the back of your mind, you know it's your friends, but right now the only thing that you can really feel on the tip of your tongue is they are your prey. You scour each long hallway, sniffing around each bend, hunting your friends down, but also aware that there's something that pursues you as well. Roll me intelligence saving throw. Nine. The hunt continues. As you catch the scent of Eleanor. Vincent. You find yourself back on the ship not the Arcturus, the the one before. The one that seems familiar to now, but you're not really sure why that feeling is strange. Would you kind of push it to the back of your mind as you wander throughout the corridors? You see some friendly faces as they uh, kind of grin at you as you pass them by. You're trying to find something on the ship. Trying to follow the scent of magic. But it's just frustratingly outside of your grasp. Roll me an intelligence saving throw. Seventeen? Seventeen? It frustratingly stays just outside of your reach. Which brings us to the beast's turn. Which, um, well, gosh, well, gosh darn, I'm just gonna, uh, let's take a break now <laughs> because this is gonna get real fuzzy real soon. Um, thank you all for uh, hanging with us to this point. Um, we will continue this. Um, what is what is going on? What really is going on right now? Um, but cool. So uh, you all, uh, we'll see you all soon. We're gonna take a bit of a break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Goodbye. All right, everybody, welcome back uh, to Game Nights. Once again, playing a little bit of a, a Durinder. Uh, and our our party is in a bit of a curious situation at the moment. 
but none perhaps more curiouser than that of Rachel Sietjon. <laughs> um, Rosh. Once again, you're kind of standing on this surface of water somehow that stretches in all directions as far as you can see. Above you is just a void, a blackness. No stars, the waters are dark. The only light seems to be coming from you. The woman that stands before you seems to, oh, that's a very hard cut. <laughs> that music does not loop very well at all. <laughs> um, the woman that stands before you just take some time regarding you. You know, I took me a long time to recognize you. But eventually it became quite clear. But Helitos, or whatever you're going by nowadays, I don't understand everything that you've been doing. When you stole my remnant, let it fall into the possession of the old ones. I don't understand. Why would you undo everything that you and I and all the rest sacrificed eternities ago and let them back into this universe? Uh, do I know you? I should say so. At least once. I know that death can out of the mind. But you've met people associated with me quite recently. They called me a uh, Maat Kari. That's what the Arleans took to calling me, but I prefer Vashta. <laughs> and now somehow you're involved in my little brother being roused from his stupor? You know, the last time he was fully awake, his bloodthirst was unquenchable, his rage undying, his appetite for slaughter, you know, all of this. I was not slated until he had devoured more than half of the living beings in this universe. And do you know how long it took to regrow and retrain and bring up civilization once again? Tiresome. It's utterly tiresome. We tried to stop it. <laughs> yes, you did. A little bit too slow. But oh. not all is lost. There's still hope for you and your merry band. What can we do? You can do what I say. And I will help you beat Coral. How do I know I can trust you? Because I will tell you exactly what it will cost you. (laughs) 
surely by not my now you must realize that one of those mortals you keep around you is infected with the curse of Coral Hall, correct? Yes. And do you know what happens when you kill Coral Hall? To all those affected? What happens? Well, Korhal's cur curse is potent, but uh, even it cannot last long beyond his death. Each of the accursed will devolve quite rapidly. Devolve? I'll, I'll make it plain. They'll, they'll go mad. Their minds will deteriorate, and they'll become little more than beasts. Uh, but just for a short time, death follows swiftly after. No mortal can survive that. When we arrived at the clearing, the beast wasn't dead then. No. It was asleep. It took me a long time to put him that way, but... Do you know how to return him to that way? Mm, at this point, no. He won't go back to sleep until his hunger is satiated. But there is an alternative. Now you stole from me my remnant. If you can get one back to me, I can help you. Now, the way you do this is once you've slain Korhal, you won't have much time, but you will have some. You must take the remnant into yourself. Draw it inside. And I saw your companions flailing all around with mine, and I think you'll know, you can always imagine how that will go for you. But I'll be able to harmonize. I'll be able to use the latent energies within your blood, connect with the remnant, take it. And I can undo the curse. And you asked if you could trust me. It's this simple. If you do not kill Korhal, everyone will die. If you kill Korhal and do not take my help, Gwendolyn and all oh, those mongrels will die. If you take my help, I can save almost every living creature in this universe. I can save Gwendolyn and her band. But you will die. Now, I said no mortal can survive the curse, and that's still true. But you're something different. And I can bury the reciprocity with you.
No need to answer me. I'll let you decide that when the time comes. But as a sign of good faith, you and, well, nearly all your friends are entranced right now. Lost. And by some miracle, Korhol hasn't swamped, swallowed you all already. But uh, I can break that for you. Break it for all you. Give you one chance. Do with it as you will. Will I know it when I see it? I believe you've already seen it. Around the neck. Well, I'm afraid uh, we have to draw this meeting to a close. It's good to see you again. Sorry, the circumstances are what they are. I hope we can talk more when this is all done. I think that very much depends on you. Okay. Send me back then. Very well. And instantly you find yourself back in the forest with everyone else as all of you. Whoops. No. Music. Stop. Blit. There we go. <laughs> you all find yourself suddenly uh, snapped out of this mental cage that you've all been uh, trapped in. <laughs> oh my God, Bolster. Okay, because Bolster's natural 20, you see, you find out the reason why you didn't all get snapped up. As Bolster has hot wired in uh, one of the enormous mechs used by the children of Volhai and is engaged the court hall as court hall is like pushing against the massive fist of boom, boom, boom. You see Samothy is unfortunately in pieces scattered in amongst the trees as uh, you see Bolster like just screaming from within the mech itself. Uh, it's like uh, as the each fist slams again and again and Vorhal, I'm sorry, Korhal spins around, its tail smacks into a leg, shearing it off from the mech. And the mech comes down and clash. Um, but it is now Champ's turn. Oh, heck. Uh, yeah, Champ's real frustrated. She's going to run up and help bolster out and smack it with her great saber. Um, but is going to cast uh, Green Flame Blade, aka Fire Strike. Um, so it does a little bit. Um, like the the blade gets like these green um, sort of like electricity kind of like goes around it. Nice. And yeah, it's going to swing at him. Uh, 23? That is a hit. Oh, okay. So that does 14 radiant damage and then I didn't make a macro for this. Um, so let's see, it's 1d8. Sorry, guys. 8 plus... Oh. 
Okay, so 14, uh, 27. (laughs) Well done there. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Excellent, excellent, excellent. And she's Um, right up in there and is going to stay up there. Jeez, Louise, well done. Um, Okay, so it's what it's going to do, it's going to freak out. Uh, and it's going to uh, raise your tail again. Um, where is my sheet? Okay. All right. So deck saves um, everybody except for Vincent and Bolster. Actually, where's Bolster? No, Bolster's totally. Uh, yeah, Bolster's fine. So uh, Vincent, you don't have to, but everybody else will have to roll a deck save. Does Captain... Mm, no, Captain's a little far. Well, Captain's just been hanging out in the wings for a while. And I don't suppose Korhal stepped back into the storm sphere at any point? Um, sure, why not? He probably makes the save, though. Str- strength save? Yep. Oh my no, god. he doesn't. Uh, but he gets advantage on saving throws against magic, so I'll roll again. Okay. Nah, he just Eight. barely makes it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not worth the bend luck. No. My deck save was 20. Okay. All right. So who rolled um, 17 or 16 or below? Me. Just okay. Me. That's Only it? Me. Okay. You take 25 points of slashing damage as the tail uh, just rips against you. A halved. A halved. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Um, okay, so everyone else is fine. It's a uh, it's an all or nothing. Uh, whoops. Uh, is is Gwen back. within five feet of me? Yes, ish. I'm using my reaction to attack it. <laughs> attack the mount. Stir again. Oh, nice. Because I have Sentinel. Sick. Uh, 22. God, you're doing so much freaking damage. Okay, next 12. Damage. Nice. Well done. Um, as this tail kind of like arcs by you, uh, flip over it maybe. Ooh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Flip over the tail and then come down and cut this like a uh, fold into its flesh. Well done. Um, it's going to bring us to Bolster, who's not going to be able to get up exactly. It's going to push itself up with one mech arm and just try to like slam down a fist onto. Oh, it, it gets up. And uh, the mech grabs onto Korahal's tail and just holds on for dear life. As Korahal kind of like scrambles <laughs> in some muds, uh, as this massive mech is like holding it in place, it's going to bring us to Rachel. Okay. If I can, can I move through Korahal's space to get to Gwen? First, you uh, take yeah. six hit points. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Did I maintain concentration on my Beacon of Hope during. Oh, our... yeah. Did I maintain concentration okay. on Healing Spirit? Um, yeah. I think yeah. technically, yeah, I think technically, yeah, you're fine. Sweet. Okay. Um, I will say this, um, we'll say it's moving through because it's kind of thrashing against the mech. We'll, we'll, I'm going to do like a really small deck save, just like avoid getting like, like knocked around. So DC 13 deck save to not get kind of like elbowed. 14. 14, nice. Okay, so you managed to like kind of like uh, roll out of the way as like it's like pushing against, like kind of flailing back against the mech, and you dodge any of these like uh, flailing. So as you push your way over to the other side, well done. Okay. Um, I'm going to um, kind of slap a hand on, on Gwen's wolf shoulder or wolf back or wherever she's at right now, and I'm going to cast a uh, fifth level. Cure wounds, uh, which is going to be, I need math here, five times eight plus five. 40, 45. 45 uh, hit points to uh, Gwen. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I just say, uh, and I think Rosh has got like a big smile on his face when he does this, and he says, finish this, love. Um, and uh, is also going to use a bonus action to use a spiritual uh, attack with a spiritual weapon again. Okay, Bob. 22 to hit. It does hit. Oh. Or seven force damage. Very cool. <laughs> As the spear like gashes into its side, I think pinning one of the feet into the ground. Um, excellent. Uh, Pace, it is your turn. 
Captain's gonna swoop. He will do nothing because he is immune what? to physical damage. Well, he will pretend that he's doing something and make Pace feel a little bit better. Yeah, Captain feels very good about himself. <laughs> good job, Captain, you useless Thank bird. You. And then I'm captain. going to shoot it. Okay. 31 saw, to hit. I thought I made that clear earlier, but I guess I did not. <laughs> I forgot. No, you did. I just okay. forgot. Um, boom, boom, 31 boom. to hit, so 21 radiant damage. Excellent, excellent, and excellent. I'm just gonna use my reaction right now and shoot him again, I guess. Okay. Well, no, awesome. I can't, because my reaction is captain to attack, which will do no damage, so never mind. I will okay, move okay. my healing spirit to, I don't know, can I reach? Can I reach Rosh? I'm sure I can, because Rosh moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rosh, sure, sure. pick another six, my man, my dude, my pal, comrade. My All man. Right. All right, yep, sure. All right, so... Ah, ah, stop moving! I'm trying to heal you! <laughs> As the uh, pterodon, <laughs> special pterodon flies over to Rosh. <laughs> All right. So, this brings us to Gwendolyn. I have to make a saving throw. Okay. For bloodlust. At advantage, right? Because it's wisdom? Yes! <laughs> Come on, Gwendolyn. <laughs> it's only a DC 10 and I have a plus 7. The odds seem in your favor. Okay. 17. I'm fine. Oof. Okay. I'm so Excellent. scared there. I'm going to attack the big thing. Okay. Growl. 25. Okay. Yay. 21. Okay. So at the beginning of this turn, it had one single hit point. <laughs> Wait. 40 damage. I think you got it. <laughs> okay. Just want so, to check. <laughs> so how do you want to do this? I Is he still right in front of me? He's still right in front of you, but he's not like leaning over you like he was. It's kind of like flailing against this giant mech that's got it pinned, a uh, spiritual weapon that's pinned its like leg into the ground. Um, lots of wounds over it as like this, these buffeting winds are like pounding and, like its back and sending its fur like. Great. I would like to use my big um, beefy wolf body while Bolster has got it, while Bolster and Rosh have it somewhat pinned to climb up on top of his back. Mm hmm. And then take um, Ramun in both big wolfy hands and just drive it right into like the base of its neck. All right, you do so. You hear this sickening crack as you split through demon bone, which is twice as good as human bone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you uh, like twist your blade, and there's a sound as like. Uh, Core Hall kind of like loses balance and boom, slams into the ground, into the mud as bones like get flown up in a little snowfall of bones. And click, 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 click. Um, you're standing on top of the, the heap of Core Hall's body. All of you, you have defeated the monster. Well done, well done. And just as you do so, there's a moment. There's another moment. <laughs> Gwen, uh, you got wounded a lot during that battle, but like the you know healing magics managed to stave off a bunch of it, but. Almost immediately as you kind of like take a breath after slaying this beast, a ringing slowly rises in your ears and a headache begins to slowly split across. And 
the entire world begins to quiver and shake slowly like like lightly at first but i'm keeping a very close eye on gwen as this uh is as the beast is killed can i turn back sure okay I turn back and try to climb down. <laughs> okay. You turn back, uh, but not all of you does. Kind of half werewolf, half half elf. <laughs> uh, or no, wait. Are you half elf? or No, you're full elf. Full elf. Yeah, you're full elf. Okay, so half werewolf, half elf. Yeah, just one half. Not quarter elf. <laughs> oh, and it feels weird. I'm sure that's. It feels real weird, oh, and dear. it hurts. Oh no, you okay? As she speaks, this oh dear, like it's kind of like mixed with the kind of oh dear. I'm, I'm gonna help Gwen down. I'm prying bolster out of the fallen, probably busted mech. Say, oh man. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Pace. You did a lot back there. I'm pretty sure you saved all of our butts. Well, I'm just glad I did something. Oh. I'll pick him up. Okay. <laughs> I think I broke my tail. I can fix that. I'm gonna go look for Callie. Okay. Um, you, I, I kind of like the image of you like bringing up your sword and just like hacking through these uh, this overgrowth from these like uh, these kind of um, tree walls that have grown up, and you slice through them, and you see uh, Callie uh, still lying there. She seems to be conscious now, but still uh, kind of very out of it, kind of scared, quite scared. She did not succeed on her saving throw. <laughs> um, oh. And is uh, still scared, um, even though the, the, the lifeless form of the beast is in front of her and has not alleviated her fear at all. Uh, I'm gonna take off my little, my sort of cape, kind of put it around her and then just like sit down next to her. Okay. Cool. Vincent, what are you doing? Uh, drop concentration on the storm sphere so that dissipates. The winds die down. Other than that, I don't really know what Vincent would be doing right now. <laughs> Gathering up your glass figurines that still exist? Maybe. <laughs> uh, they probably got smashed in the storm sphere. Um, I think you find one in the mud, still intact. <laughs> I will rebuild you. <laughs> <laughs> My precious. My precious. You'll be stronger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Rachel, what are you doing? Um if I've helped uh Gwen down, then I'm just going to if I can reach out with my mind or if I need to whisper, I will. I just I, I kinda try to reach out and say how long do I have? Not long. When the world falls apart, that should be pretty close to the end. When are you all right? Um. And at this point, finally reverts to your full elven form. I don't know. Will you help me with something? Um, I saw something around the creature's neck that I think might be important. Uh, just give me a boost or something. <laughs> or can I use your sword? Yeah, all right. Um, I want to try to climb up and cut or, or break the 
whatever this is off of Coral's okay. neck. It takes some doing, but you manage to uh, slice it away. I, I there's this um, un uh, unnatural rapid decaying that is happening as like uh, kind of flesh is sloughing off quite quickly. So it's it, it's not uh, that difficult to get it off. Can I just drop it on the ground? <sighs> what is it? Um, I think it's a remnant, like one of the keys that we found before. And? Well, I, it's hard to explain and there's not a lot of time, but I had a vision. I have to destroy it. Do you need help? Is this how you came back from this the dead that he was doing? I'm not sure. I don't really understand much of it myself. But I can do it. Um, it's going to be okay. Well, I feel like the planet is shaking and I would like to not be here anymore. All right. What do I do? I don't freaking know. What do I do? Just hold it. It's that simple. I pick it up. Okay. Uh, immediately, you're kind of racked with pain that lances through you. Um, it, <clears throat> it quickly starts to eat into your flesh. What does it look like though? Cause I'm it, thinking Pace might freak out a little bit. Yeah, I think I would imagine she would. Um. Yeah, what? Pace is gonna draw her short sword. Be like, if I have to cut your arm off, I guess I will. It's fine. It begins to kind of wrap over <laughs> on like all parts of Rosh and kind of like going over them. Rachel Satyan of the Incandescent Flame or whatever you are, are you okay? It's going to be fine. It's all going to be fine. I want to insight check Rosh just to see if they actually know what's going on or if they're just trying to be cool in front of us. I would like to join in on that because I'm worried about a friend situation. Like, I'm, I'm is, is their brain okay? You can try. 21? 16. Okay. Um, do you want to whisper me a roll? Um, it won't Probably matter because I have a negative two to charisma. Well, I also say, I also say this. Rosh doesn't lie. Rosh really believes this. So whether or not they actually know what they're talking about, Rosh sincerely believes that they're telling the truth, that it's going to be fine. I, I don't want to... I, I think... I don't want to step on your toes with the uh, this, but I think for the first time, Rosh is Unless it is, oh, it's the first time, aww. So good. And I think it's a painfully obvious. Okay, yeah, it's perfect. So if I can tell that, what I want to try and do then is take Whisper and stab the necklace. I, if he does that, I hold up a hand and say, stop, please. This is the only way. To do what? To save everyone. Says who? Do you not count in everyone? This isn't the first time I've died and it won't be the last. Yeah, me neither, but that doesn't mean I want you to go through it, though. 
As you're talking to Rosh, there's these tentacles that are emerging from this massive band of flesh that go kind of wrapping on, grabbing into. It's not a, it's not pretty. It's, it's like you see certain tentacles like kind of like grabbing the side and start to like bury into uh, their sides. And I think at that point, like Rosh probably goes to one knee. And even with, I, I, like, you didn't say this, but I imagine you're probably using your healing spirit a little bit. Like, it's only help, like, superficially. It's it's not outpacing this thing. Well, shoot. Um, so uh, I'm going to give you all just a little bit of time, and then I'm going to make stuff happen. I feel like Pace is going to go over there and try and rip some tentacles off. Like, she's going to have to be physically restrained. Okay. Um, I, oh, you can you can do stuff too? I mean, I'm going to try. Uh, I'm just going to yell out to her to stay where she is or stay, and I'm going to cast command on her. <gasps> what saving throw is that? Uh, that's charisma? wisdom. Uh, charisma? Wisdom. My bad. I always think it's crazy. Do you still have Beacon of Hope up? <laughs> <laughs> No, probably not kidding, anymore. That's only a 14. That's a fail. I guess I, she stops. Okay, she stops. All right, I'm going to give... So that's one. There's three more of you. You can do something or you can not do something. But pretty soon. Well, it's four if I'm counting on this. I'll take the last move whenever... Uh, yeah, I'm going to give Rosh the last move, but <laughs> if there is a last move, Rosh will get the last move. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing Vincent's going to let it happen at this point. Thank you. You guys are hurting my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Gw Gwendolyn. I would like to kneel down with Rush. Oh my God. <laughs> what is happening? Okay. <laughs> I will kneel down with Rush. And I just take their face in my hands and say, Should I be saying goodbye? For now, I'll see you soon. Can I trust you? And I'll carry oh. you with me. And I kiss him. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Both literally and physically. <laughs> yep. They like not harm me so long as I have faith. Um, if it's my last, uh, I think as I feel it, kind of. Yeah. I, I, I think right at this moment, like your hair begins to lose, like the, the, the flames kind of like slowly begin to die down. Those like uh, veins of uh, molten fire begin to like slowly um, dim. This was amazing all of it I hope I remember this when I come back I looked at Gwen I love you I love all of you carry the light with you
with that rush kind of tilts their head down a little bit as this thing continues to crawl over then you all see a light a light that begins to grow somewhere within Rosh's chest the thing itself kind of quivers as this happens and as these tendrils have been wrapping all around it suddenly they all withdraw and then go into the light itself and it disappears and Arash unlike you've ever seen before with all of the light snuffed out. Begins to slowly crumble. A bundle of chalky stones that scatter across the ground. All but one. Suspended in the air. A small light still glows. Emanating from a raw uncut, unpolished diamond. It slowly rotates and begins to settle slowly to the ground. What do you do? I'll pick it up and hand it to Gwen and say should probably hold on to this indeed I know it's not a good time for it but we really need the am spray now I do and just as you say that you see in the, in the distant horizon these twisting gnarled mountains begin to kind of crumble in on themselves as the world itself begins to tear itself apart you all dash back towards the portal out of core hall's plane back into the ravaged carcass of the nihilus and eventually into the Arcturus, which even though as you pass through the airlock, help is there greeting you all warmly with a little wriggle of it, their antenna, still feels much emptier than it did before. That's another music I want. Okay. So, um, where do you want to go? We'll say you want to go back to like the, the space station outside of Numora, maybe, or do you want to hang out, say any words here, or you kind of do whatever you want. I imagine we should probably head back to your to your order, see what this means for all y'all. 
Uh, do y'all see nothing on this screen? I just see space. Space. Yeah, it's where it, we were when we were in the Matrix. Okay, I see like a white grid, no pictures. <laughs> okay, we're in the Matrix. All right, I'm just gonna reset. Maybe that'll bring it back. All right. Cool. Ace is gonna say, um, we're going to need to go to Sham Shamir. Much man, dear. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> that might be our first stop, actually. And tell them what? Good news. I don't think they'll take it the same way we are. But they have to take it just the same. Everyone has to. They believe I shall come back in someone else. They still need to know. Their mother needs to know. I think Vincent just goes and starts plotting a course for Chamachamandir. Okay. That is a long journey, I think. Um, let me see. Measure that. What are all these new things? Snap to center? Okay. There's so many new ruler motions. Hmm. Um, all right. So let's go. It's a 10 day journey. So um, I'm going to say 10 days. So it'll be, oh, the fifth month. Whoops. All right. So I think it was 4.22 when yeah. we went in. So on the journey during the days, I'm going to hang out with Gwen. And I'm going to read some books aloud. Gwen is pretty much the same old Gwen. That breaks my heart. <laughs> On the outside. Yeah. Okay. All right. Unless anyone has anything else to do. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think because... Definitely would talk to Gwen at some point, but while I'm thinking of that first, uh, mechanics question, we had said it would be 50 days and I would get piloting proficiency. Yeah, I think you probably will have piloting proficiency. So halfway to Chamachamandir, suddenly I'm so much better at flying. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> um, so let me see what is halfway between the two. Probably nothing, but oh, actually the Conus system. Interesting. Interesting. All right, I'm gonna put you all on the map actually, so you all can see this. Um, I'll switch the music again because it's. Excuse me, pardon me. There we go. So, Kana system. It's about half, that's halfway. Um, we'll say that you're all stopping at a spaceport there. Okay, um, and this is like a. You're all re refueling the Arcturus. Uh, my dog is looking at me so sad. He's like, "Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Why you? Why do you do this? I'm sorry." Um. So you're at the spaceport, refueling the all the fuel reserves. You're um, getting the ship retrofitted. And Vincent, at this point, you have gotten so familiar with the way that Arcturus handles that um, you make some of your own specifications and uh, known to the mechanics there, uh, letting them know like your particular way that you like things to be set up, your configurations. Um, they upgrade some of the things for you. Uh, and finally, after this long, knowing what you like you're able to request the things that 
help um, your particular flying style. And so you have gained proficiency in flying. Um, well done. And what about with my wings? <laughs> um, ooh, good question. They are now uh, over, f- well, f- over five days, not a ton happens, but um, I said there was like a very thin membrane that kind of covered all of them. It seems to go grow a little bit more thick after five days. Um, sorry, not much is going to happen that much time. <laughs> but, that was but, more uh, just a joke. <laughs> but yes. Uh, and um, at this spaceport, um, there's a lot of back. Act- I think there's a lot of things going on. There's marketplaces. There's new foods. There's uh, different corporations that have uh, set up house here. Um, people traveling through all over the universe. Uh, does anyone leave the ship for any extended period of time? Not unless Bolster does, or anyone needs me to. You know, I imagine Vincent is probably the main one who's just gone out, resupplied, because um, we don't have our cleric anymore to create food and water for us on long journey. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah. Oh no, we're gonna starve. <laughs> hey, I can find food. I will leave, and I will find food. <laughs> okay. All right. Actually, I feel like Peace would food? actually, if anyone left, she'd go with them. Okay, so you and Vincent, we'll say. Yep. So maybe you're looking for some, uh, so at this point, um, I say that Kitty can prepare foods. You just gotta like buy like a big vat of like proto food. Yep, soil and green. <laughs> yeah, soil and green that Kitty turns into food that you recognize basically. Yep. Um, basically kind of like a, like a, like a gross version of the, uh, what was the thing in Star Trek called? The, what was the thing that you just say, like to make it and makes it? I know what you're thinking of. I have no idea it's, what it's, it's called. It's not called, it's not a materializer, but it creates things out of nothing. No. Is there anything? Replicator. Replicator. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, for God's sake. Thank you. Um, that was gonna drive me bonkers. I even have Google at my th- fingertips and I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> um, fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> the chat is catching up now. It's like, it's replicated, ding dong. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so, sorry, I got lost in that and forgot where we were. So Missy, we're going- picking up proto foods so that we can make foods. All right, so you go to a kind of a, Which a marketplace. Which hates, by the way. Oh sure. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> sure. Um, I think I think Pace probably hates knowing what it is, but she yeah. really enjoyed it <laughs> before she knew. <laughs> yeah. Now she's like, "What? <laughs> yeah. He told me it was meat. <laughs> it was. I meat, mean, right? there's still meat in it. It's just teeny tiny meat. That is ridiculous. <laughs> she right, takes a little meat and turns it into bigger meat. This is not. What is this? It, it's science is what it is and maybe a little bit I don't eat science I eat meat I mean herd animals have been uh, domestically bred for millennia that's science no that sounds like nature to me actually what you're saying there I mean when people do it it's it's a mix of nature and science it's not I feel like science. this argument just like uh, hello? Faces like no are, y- are y'all gonna buy anything what is going on here <laughs> you have any actual food it's, I don't. Yeah, this goop is actual food. Pace. No, no, like it's real food. food. It's real food. This isn't it, a metaphorical food. This is real food. I don't think so. It does not look like food. It does not smell like food. I. I, I well, not now. It's in its little proto flabby state. <laughs> uh, we'll take it. Uh, you don't need to be here for this. I just feel like Pace is going to make a huge scene, like, in the entire time. Like, even going back to the ship, she's complaining. And then as okay. soon as you lose sight of it for a minute and it's food served, you'll, you'll be happy. Okay. Precisely. So, while you are having this very loud discussion, a very tall figure 
very, very thin, with kind of greenish skin and uh, kind of yellow eyes. Red frills? No frills. Frillless. Is kind of making their way through the marketplace. And your conversation draws their attention. But they're a little confused as to why. <laughs> Not sure why they're drawn to you. But they're following something. Wait, did you say someone's following us down the street on this unfamiliar marketplace? Is that what you said? I mean, go kidnap a child. I'm going to kidnap this thing. I'm just trying to make sure that the situation is right. Uh, not following you, but this creature oh, okay. approach, approaches you. Oh. Like approaches like I should address it? You don't have to. If there is eye contact, Pace will go, what? Uh, yes, uh, can we help you with something? I'm sorry, but do you know where the Arcturus is? I, I'm looking for it and I got a bit lost. What? Why are you looking for it? Who um, are you? It's kind of a long story. Uh, your name wouldn't happen to be Pace, would it? It might be. That must make you Vincent. Yes, it doesn't. Stranger, I'm just going to tell you right now, we have had a rough couple of days, so you're going to need to oh. tell us right now what's going on. That's right. Um, I'm here about the light hallowed. All what? right, come with us, and uh, we'll just start taking them back. You cannot just tell people to come with us! They clearly know something's going on, and the others are probably going to want to hear this. Yeah, but we should probably find out first. Hey, what do you know? You also didn't say who you were, also. My my name is Atal Deshrani. Uh, you are pretty tall. That makes sense. <laughs> I get that joke a lot. Are they as tall as me? Are they taller than me? Are they uh, just how tall? How tall are you? Are you me, I'm almost seven feet. What am I? Yeah, I'm seven feet. Oh, seven, I'm they're a little bit shorter. Yeah. Six feet. Six, I'd still call him tall, taller than the other shorts. Um, and and a very, I mean, kind of bald head, pointed ears out to the side, grayish skin, a little bit flat face with a smushed up nose. Um, if you've encountered them before, you'd know that this is a uh, a gif. I don't think I have. Okay, then it's an alien. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm. A member of the edict. Uh -huh. I know that the light hallowed has passed. What? And how do you know that? I've known for some time the day and the time of the light hallowed's passing. It's. Part of my job to uh, see to their return. Okay. Well, now I agree with you, Vincent. You can come with us. Yes, if you'll follow us, please. After you. I will use I whatever, like intraplanetary communicators we have to just call back to the ship and be like, hey, you're probably going to want to gather in the cargo hold. We've Meanwhile, got... Pace is like, so tall. Does these look like food to you? I've eaten stranger. Mm, so, but would you like, call it food though? Anything is food if you're hungry enough. I respect that. I respect the determination. Yes, okay. Then oh, so it was in Doc B. E, I was in Doc A. What? Nothing. I've. I was looking for your ship for a while now. <laughs> it is okay. We take you. Keep up, and then we get there, and then everyone's there. <laughs> so 
so uncomfortable being paced. It's so awkward. All right. So, uh, Atal, you board the ship. Um, uh, as a DM, I don't actually know a whole lot about what you're used to, what you're not like, uh, not used to. Um, this is kind of like an, an older ship. I don't know if that's normal or not normal for you. Uh, uh, probably not so normal. Probably travel in a lot of like commercial transport. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so I think it probably feel like in, in the way that like going into a uh, like a charter jet. It some it it's like this weird mix of like luxury, but also like this is really rinky dinky <laughs> at the same time. Um, like where uh, as you walk in, you're like, are you sure this can fly? It's quite small. Um, there's uh, cargo thrown around. There's still probably stains from when Pace had her animals there around. There's certainly a smell. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, and I think we'll say, well, do, do you, uh, the other, also, gosh, hmm. I also want to give Champ a, a chance to do something because she has a little bit more latitude than the rest of you all do and that I haven't really given her a chance to explore. Um, but we'll say for some reason, you needed to piggyback. Your ship is in their dry dock or in their um, cargo bay right now. Mm-hmm. And, you, and you can leave after this point if you'd like. Um, just you have that freedom. Um, but for right now, your your ship is well, still in technical dry dock. Yeah, I mean, it's probably I have to stick with them because it's a little cramped for two people. It's a little. That's true. It's a single seater plane, so you can't actually. You can offload Kaylee now, but you couldn't earlier. <laughs> that was like the biggest problem. Okay, that makes sense. So uh, yeah, and I feel like if there was an extra room on the ship, Kaylee would be in it, and Champ's probably hanging out where the animals would be because she can't smell nothing so it's fine in there <laughs> well the animals are gone at this point yeah but like the the like, smell remains <laughs> yeah. wherever it was that they were in the cargo it's okay. probably, probably been, sort of made it they try to press the digitate the smell out but it doesn't leave <laughs> yeah yeah it's just ground into the particles <laughs> some of it is unpressed to digitatable um sorry but at all yes that's what you see in smell and notice uh, this is where the uh, the light hollowed was being. This is the ship. Yes. This isn't where Rosh spent most of their time. Rosh's room has like lots of pillows. That makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I see the others have joined us. Presumably, unless anyone is obstinately refusing. Um, Gw- uh, Gwendolyn. Uh, champ bolster this is a tall Deshrani and they say they're a member of the edict and knew about when the lat hallowed would be passing and they have come seeking us saying they have something to do with the lat hallowed's return lat hallowed that's that's rush right oh. that is correct we were on our way to you. I, um, I knew that you would be coming through here, and that's why I uh, waited here for a little while. Um, I was hoping that I could be there when it happened, but you must have crossed a plane or something. I couldn't. I couldn't see. We did. Do you have it? Yes. Good. Hold on to it. If they traveled with you as long as they did, they must have trusted you. Um, I should explain a bit more, but I uh, don't have as much... Well, I don't spend as much time in uh, civilized company, uh, so it's a strange thing to uh, have long conversation. You'll um, be right at home here. You pay us a compliment. 
I am a priest of the edict, as Rush was at the time before their ascension. Um, I had the vision many years ago of the time and the place of the Light Hallowed's passing. And it was my job to be prepared for that moment when it came. Uh, and now it is my job to foster the return so that another new Light Hallowed might take their place. So that the entity that you know as Lashul Satyon will return. So you say you kind of knew ahead of time that this was going to happen. I mean, that kind of sucks because you actually weren't really ready for it. It wasn't my place to keep it from happening. I gain occasional insights into the future. Some things I can intervene. I can sway, I can end. But some things are set in stone. And this was one of them. This had to happen. Many, many lives would have been lost if the Light Hallow did not accompanied you. But, as with all things, stars die, and they're reborn. So do you mean Rash is going to come back? Yes. As is they have. This has happened many times. That's very cool. But, uh, these are dangerous times we are in right now. You and your people are aware of the darkness that is growing. Normally, the process of selecting and uh, returning the light handled would be a slow one, one that would be left to time and fate. Uh, the gods were trying to speed it along a bit. And that means what exactly? I'm not sure yet. Um, I got to this part. I'm waiting to find out what happens next. So, Pace has been kind of like standing beside Atal this whole time. Just gonna casually take a few steps back while they're talking, and then like just kind of like stick a leg out and try and like kick him in the back of the knees gently. See if, like, they can see that coming. Like, if they could see the future. Like, just try, you know that thing, like, when you go behind someone and, like, try to knee their knees and they're like, ah! Like, that's basically what she's trying to do. Dead leg. Yeah. yeah. Um. You want to roll me 2d20? Not you, Pace? Yeah, okay. I'll roll it. I'm... Okay. A two and a twelve. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can you can apply. I mean, I think actually either of those <laughs> would work. Yeah, um, I'll have a roll of two. Okay. Just so, happens. So uh, you go to trip, and Atal just kind of lifts up one leg just real briefly, and then sets it down, and nothing happens. As you, you're kind of like a little bit off kilter. It's nuts. Does that uh, help? Jules. Okay, so seems we're all at a bit of a loss what to do next. I mean, we have the remnant from Rosh. My suggestion would be returning the... What you have is, isn't 
well, I don't really know what it is, but I believe that that is important to the Light Hallow's return, the, the diamond that you hold. Um, I believe taking it back to the Edict would be the safest place for it while we determine what to do next. Excellent. We are planning on going there anyway. I might be able to get us there a bit faster. Um, uh, DM, I do have the teleportation circle. Can you take the ship with you? I can't take the ship, but I could take us. Uh, and I get to I get to have two sigils in my mind bank. Um, okay. Cool. So. You can, My question you can is, hold off on the second second location, but um, okay. Mandir is certainly one, yeah. I could take us there. Getting us back would be difficult. Does the ship have autopilot? Could you just send it and have it pick you up when we're done there? Or? It looks aghast at Vincent. Like, does it? Have I found an autopilot function? I feel like we actually talked about it in another episode. It could make yeah, it simple. That was, was, yeah, it won't be able to warp travel however uh, you do have help mm -hmm. can help fly this GD ship he's been doing okay he's been flying it okay what do you think he's been doing all this time we've been gone <laughs> he's just I don't know. there in the, in the coffee cleaning and running <laughs> flight simulations <laughs> trying Taking to get laps. smell out of the cargo bay <laughs> Oh. Um, you could also like for now. Well, hmm. yeah, I do got... actually need the ship to be at Shamshmir at some point, though, because they, tw twist they their have head. my animals, though. And then to like uh, to Vincent. <laughs> she means to match Mendier. We've already plotted the course. We're That's what I said. Stuff. Uh, if it is a problem, we can go the slow way, but I figured... I can fly if you need me to. I think despite G's voracious protestations in the chat, we'll go that route. <laughs> I feel like Pace actually sort of responds how I am, and Pace is just like, freaking what?! <laughs> <laughs> Just like stares at help, like. <laughs> <laughs> I've flown many ships. Help! Like, you have to tell a girl these things. <laughs> What's a girl? No, that's it's actually right, a really help. deep question. <laughs> well, I don't know what help's saying, but I can help them navigate. Say they can fly this. They can fly the ship. Um, I also think that in the moment where health appears, that uh, Atal is probably really fascinated in help. I don't know if Atal would have ever seen a creature like help before. Um, probably not. But it's probably very fascinating. Is it? Uh, is, what? Uh, uh, hello. Uh, uh, good to meet you. My name is Atal. Hello, Atal. Um, what is your name? I am Help. A pleasure to meet you, uh, Help. Uh, where are you from? I don't know. Oh. That's... That's sad. I... I might have, and I just start pulling out books and like just start flipping through books to see if I can figure it out. I probably can't, but just start flipping through all the books that I have and trying to I figure feel out. Like anime style pace is still in the background just like yelling like help with fly this whole time why do we even let vincent do it like vincent had never flown before help has done it many times <laughs> we'll say help is proficient <laughs> it oh. has been this entire time but pace is just freaking out in the background like what flips the table uh this one has <laughs> 10 legs uh, that one has two legs no jeff's just like man he can talk to it too <laughs> uh, maybe see if Bolster can rig you up some kind of pheromone translator. 
Well, I mean, I'm willing to try. Don't you worry. I'll sort you out with something. Now I'm imagining that would be nice. the, like has 99% accuracy and just every so often a random word gets mistranslated. <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. I mean angry. <laughs> I like it. You wouldn't like me when I'm dead. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> uh. Well, Alright, so you're all t- t- deporting, t- well, deporting to Shemensis? J- just one last thing. Gwen, you've been pretty quiet. You, you good really <laughs> with facing this right away, or should we take a slow route, give you a little more time? We can go. Insight check. I was <laughs> just gonna say, say insight no check. <laughs> you can 13. roll them. Oh, oh, okay. 19. Um, you can roll deception or just translate how that, however you want, pretty much. Um, it's not a deception, I don't think. I think she thinks we can go. Oh, here's this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. Oh, well, I, uh, hmm. I don't want to push back on that too much. You're not dis- you're not being dis- deceitful about what you're saying, but like I, I don't think they're de- they're inciting you on what you're saying so much as like what you're feeling. Um, yes. Now, if you if you want to veto this, you're uh, you, I give you permission to to veto it. No, um, I'm just trying to think of the right words because I don't think she's trying to hide it. I think that's just how she is. <laughs> it is how she is. Um, do you think that they've been around you long enough to I think so. intuit anything? I think... Or at least Pace with those roles? I was gonna say Pace is... They've also... They were together before the Arcturus. Yeah. So. I think... Yeah, because I, do, I don't think she's trying to hide it. I think she's just generally doesn't say very much about it, but I... Okay. Um, I so I, I'm gonna give uh, um, Vincent. I mean, because both of you are pretty familiar with Gwen at this point. Vincent, you just feel a little off, but you don't really know why. Pace, um, I don't. You can't. I you can't read anything from Gwen, but that is enough to I think bother you. I think. Um, Yeah, Gwen is is a notoriously difficult to read person, but I think you're it, it's it's um in, in much the way that like the way the music wor- works, it's like a lot of music is the notes you're not playing. <laughs> like it's the same way the way you're looking at Gwen, and so yeah. like um more intuition than actual evidence. Exactly. but probably nothing that you can really confront her on based on what you've seen. Yeah, Pace wouldn't anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Atal, you can go ahead. Yeah. Do your magic. Yeah, um, if I do, uh, do you mind if I use this space here? And gesturing like in the cargo bay, uh, the floor. Well, clearly not using it for anything else. Um, it just was so... Clean. I didn't want. I, I'm going to need to mark it a bit, and I didn't. Wait, like, is it permanent though? No, you can. It's just chalk. Okay, well done. Knock yourself out. Uh, all right then, and uh, take out a book, flop it down in the middle of the room, and we're gonna draw in chalk like a circle around it. Okay. Um, and once I've consulted the book a few times to make sure I get it right, probably smudging out a few lines and then redrawing them. Um, he said, no, don't want to go there. Uh, and uh, after I finished, I say, all right. Onwards then. Is everybody going? No, I was Not everybody go. Hmm? How, do, how does this work? Does not, can not everybody go? No, every, I think everyone here can go. Um, yeah, I could... 
I can transport everyone here, but I, it's your choice whether you want to go or not. Yes. All right, then. And uh, as, standing. As Kitty kind of rolls, like the armature is sticking out of the corner. Like, Don't forget to bring a snack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Pace absolutely takes the snacks. Thank you, Kitty. You are, as always, probably the one of, well, top five most valuable per- people on this ship. It's not why I do it. <laughs> I don't mind in for the accolades, but thank you. I want to know who's yes, less useful than Kitty now. <laughs> I know. Apparently Vincent. Because <laughs> we had a pilot this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, shit. help us to a polite. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, don't get to pilot right. now. Jim. So as you all kind of like get ready to go, sort of like help us. You in a week. I hug him. <laughs> if he's cool with it. I do whatever his equivalent of a hug is. Okay. Like and a head nuzzle? I don't know. His antenna is just kind of like lightly graze your skin. Whichever part of you is anyway. Yeah, Champ like awkwardly pats him. He'll be fine. Um, he extends uh, one little leg out to you and like kind of touches your uh, shin, and then like rece- like draws his little foot back. Uh, are you bringing Kaylee with you? Uh oh, sorry. I should have. I thought I was staying on the ship with Kaylee. Oh, you're saying on the ship Thanks, with Kaylee. We'll be fine. And, oh, Bye, okay, everybody. Okay, okay. okay, then I don't know why he helps said goodbye to you. He's like, and he says, but you can't hear this. He's like, I'm nope. sorry. I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> there was a miscommunication. <laughs> it's actually pretty good that Kaylee's there now because she can be a translator between you two. <laughs> yeah. Huh? We'll figure it out. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be the best, most awkward sitcom. Just a week <laughs> of champ and help. I will, I will say this. I will say this. Uh, now I will say this. Um, this this doesn't really matter with the scene at this moment, but uh, actually, let's finish the scene, then I'll explain later. So wrapping the scene up. Okay. Circle uh, was created. Mm-hmm. I gather everyone in the circle, and then I clap my hands, and as I clap my hands together, there's this sort of um, circle of energy that forms, and then it expands outward, sort of encompassing everybody in this dark sphere, um, and then just collapses and disappears um, with all of us in it right into a black hole <laughs> <laughs> you fool uh, because... <laughs> gotcha except for champ you're too smart <laughs> um i'll get you some other way uh okay so uh we're gonna call it there so uh some kind of fun news everybody uh this is the conclusion of season one of wild space uh, we're going to be starting season two uh, probably in January of 2019. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break off this month, um, but we'll be starting with an entirely different crew and another corner of the universe. Um, we uh, will have more news about that upcoming uh, next uh, next uh, in two weeks the 17th uh, we will be having a one shot that i believe will be set in the wild space universe um won't be run by me it'll be actually run by sean uh and with a uh, completely custom system it's going to be uh very cool what i've seen of it so far i i'm i'm hesitant to like say what it's about just in case any of the details change um uh but it should be basically like kind of uh s- scary but um uh maybe scary maybe funny like uh we'll see we'll see that's not up to me that's up to you guys yeah now uh, uh, okay so the one thing i wanted to say is that like hell uh, like about the actual game is that help has learned to communicate with kitty with antenna movements in her own like a kind of version of sign language and uh i'm sure Kitty can also like pretty well, you both being machines, he can teach it to you real quick. And so Champ will be able to communicate with help just very differently than um, everyone else. Um, 
I'm okay. imagining like just Jack Ant straight in the sort of like I know Kung Fu Matrix scene. She just has it uploaded straight into her brain. Yeah, yes. it's just like the, all these little. I know ASL things now. Suddenly, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, cool. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've got four more minutes till ten. We can bounce now. But does anyone want to talk about season one retrospective? Four minutes. <laughs> It was great. Okay, goodbye. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was great. Yeah, I'm just worried if we start on this, it's going to go too long. <laughs> Moral of the story, always bring snacks with you. That's what Pace wants everyone to know. Snacks. Always have snacks. I'm coming in season 2.5, all cleric party, because clerics are okay. <laughs> No. <laughs> 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 um, pro tip to let your friend join a cult <laughs> yeah true <laughs> true uh, alright GG everybody yep you beat the snot out of that thing good job oh good and that thing with bolster like I, I thought about that thing maybe happening I, I was like oh that'd be